to be lasting Father in heaven. We thank you, dear God, for such a wonderful opportunity that you granted us that we may come to your presence just to know how we can work for you in the line of gospel medical missionary work. We are praying for your Holy Spirit to be with us and fill us more with the wisdom and intelligence to do your work and to finish it to thy glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to share my screen so that we can <clears throat> we can read together. Um, let me see. Yes, uh, I believe we can see it. Um, the topic of today, I'm going to handle some, something small on carrying out the work, but still this is in the line of uh, gospel medical missionary work. Um, it should be according to the divine pattern. God has given us a way in which we are supposed to work. Even as medical missionaries, last time we looked at the pattern of Jesus Christ, and we realized that Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching out unto the people. Now, this is the method that every missionary who has been called by God who is following the, uh, the divine commission that Christ gave unto his disciples must follow it in order to, uh, to get a success. And the success here means uh, making um, souls that are Christ-like, that can uh, really see that the love of God has been manifested unto them. And this will only be achieved through a practical means of the gospel. Now, the giving of the gospel to the world is the work that God has committed to those who bear his name. For acts, sin, and misery, the gospel is the only antidote. Uh, to make known to all mankind the message of the grace of God is the first work of those who know its healing power. Now, the gospel is a restorative uh, uh, message. Uh, the essence of the gospel is to restore man physically, mentally, and spiritually so that the image that was marred can be restored. When Christ come, when this uh, physical body will put on immortality and the glorification will take place uh, to put on that immortal uh, uh, body, Christ is working in us now to make sure that that image is restored. And the gospel is the only, the only um, medicine or an antidote that can make us to achieve that uh, standard. And so gospel medical missionaries must know really what the true gospel is, the life of Jesus Christ. There are not many even among educators and statesmen who comprehend the causes that underlie the present state of society. Those who hold the reins of government are not able to solve the problem of moral corruption, poverty, pauperism, and increasing crime. They are struggling in vain to place business operations on a more secure basis. If men will give more heed to the teaching of God's word, they will find a solution of the problems that perplex uh, perplex them. Now, the world, as we uh, as we talk now, we know the great economic reset that uh, uh, that philosophy and the endeavors that the world governments are trying to uh, to follow to make sure that 
the vision 2030 is accomplished uh, in 20, uh, I think 2010 or 2011, uh, there was the sustainable development goals out of the millennial development goals that were set. Now, the world will never have a sustainable government, energy, food security, if it is not according to the Bible. Most of the concepts that the worldlings are following are not going to bring a solution. But us who have been called as uh, me medical missionaries, everybody in as a missionary, be it an, an evangelist, a minister, a publisher, a canvasser, uh, everyone is a gospel medical missionary in some essence, uh, in some facets. Of course, we know that medical missionary work has been is divided, subdivided into different areas. There are those who are called to be physicians and those who are called to be nurses, those who are called to give encouragement, to pray for people, those who can be able to visit the sick, to visit people and comfort them. Those are aspects of medical missionary work. And so when we say that soon there will be no missionary work, but there will be no uh, any other work in the ministerial, in ministerial lines, save medical missionary work. Uh, it doesn't mean that only those who are healing, whom uh, we know as having no, uh, knowledge about herbs and other things, are the ones who are going to work. No, everybody who is following the third angel's message, the three angel's messages to the, giving that message to the world, are giving a healing message, everlasting gospel, a message of restoration. And so all of us fit in this uh, world uh, to make sure that we bring a solution. The world needs something better. And this is where we as medical missionary, gospel medical missionaries are called into, to make sure that uh, the, uh, the state of the society is settled uh, in a way that people can see the word of God ruling their life. The God spell is a wonderful simplifier of life's problems. Its instruction heeded will make plain many a perplexity and save us from many an error. It teaches us to estimate things at their true value and to give the most effort to the things of greatest worth, the things that will endure. That is so interesting that a wonderful simplifier of life's problems. People look at complicated policies, uh, but the gospel, which is simply the word of God, has everything. If men will live according to the word of God, healing will have been brought, uh, food security will have been brought, um, we will be uh, having very simple ways of treating people because people will be having faith in the word of God. So it is so much important because this is the only solution uh, that brings things that endure. Wealth will, uh, will not last uh, if it is shelter, the good houses that we have will not last, but the gospel will last because it brings everlasting righteousness. It brings us to a condition where we have the mind of God. And if we have the mind of God, um, we are like him and we are his children. And so we receive eternal life a gift that will last forever. That is what we are supposed to give to the world. Um, everywhere their hearts crying out for something which they have not, they long for a power that will give them mastery over sin, a power that will deliver them from the bondage of evil, a power that will give health and life and peace. Many who once knew the power of God's word have dwelt where there is no recognition of God and they long for the divine presence. Now, 
my brothers, uh, God only needs us to have a power to be anointed. We looked at this last time that Christ received power from above. And so it, it went on doing good. We have to receive that power so that we can go forth to bring relief to the world uh, so that people may have a divine presence. There is um, nothing great than knowing that God is with you. And many people are hopeless because they, they are not sure that God is with them. And uh, the state of the world today show, uh, shows that the presence of God is being withdrawn gradually. In 90, page, uh, page 11 says that the spirit of God is, being, is gradually being removed. And we are seeing um, the perplexities that are taking place in the world. Gospel medical missionaries have been called to make, uh, to make the hearts of men to look above, because that is where the help comes from. Not to look unto man, no. Not to look unto the governments, no. It is for us to point people to the heavenly sanctuary where they can see um, or they can experience Jesus Christ, who is our savior. Um, the world needs today what it needed 1900 years ago. We looked at it last time. And, and this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, if we read Christ Objects lesson, page uh, 415 and 416, those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, behold your God. The last rays of merciful light, the last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. The children of God are to manifest his glory in their own life and character. They are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. Now that is, let me pause there for a moment. That the children of God are to manifest his glory. When Moses asked for the glory of God, God showed him his character. So the children of God are to manifest the character of God in their own life. Now we know that in the great controversy, God is looking uh, for people who are going to vindicate his character. In PP 68, we are told that the plan of salvation was more than just the salvation of man, but it was to vindicate the character of God. God is trying to solve the sin problem in a way that is going to other people who are going to live a righteous life. A people are going to live by his word and he's going to show that those who are saved are saved and those who are lost are lost. And should Jesus Christ come again, they are lost forever because the virtue coming from the gospel has not been infused in their lives. And so as gospel medical missionaries, God is calling us to, uh, to demonstrate this glory in our own life. That is so much important. Our lives speak more. We cannot be gospel medical missionaries by just um, theory. Our lives must show. Our lives must demonstrate. This, the light of the sun of righteousness is to shine forth in good works, in words of truth and the deeds of holiness. That is so much uh, huge for me uh, that it is supposed to shine forth in good works. The life of a Christian is shown in good works. That's, that's, that does not mean that we are saved by works, no. Works are the fruits of 
the faith that we demonstrate. And uh, we are seeing in, in Kenya, we have many, many denominations, but still crime increases, still adultery and fornication increases. Uh, what is the problem? It is because the gospel or the truth has not been shown in deeds of holiness. Christ's life has not been shown to the world. What we need to understand the best, what is it? We need to be enlightened in regard to the plan of salvation. There is not one in 100 who understands for himself the Bible truth on this subject that is so necessary to our present and eternal welfare. Now this plan of salvation in its practical aspect, the, 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 the devil has tried to obscure so that people cannot attest to the saving experience of the gospel. We come to the medical missionary work. The workers today have become more selfish. People have become more selfish. Um, and there need to be a cleansing in the medical missionary field. We need to operate like Jesus Christ operated. We need to be moved by compassion. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 35, Christ was moved with compassion. Are we moved with compassion when we see children who are naked? When we see a people who have no home, when we see a people who have no food, what are we doing as medical missionaries? Is your heart touched? Christ was moved with compassion. And so we need also to be moved with compassion. The plan of salvation is the only antidote or policy that needs to be followed. And it is in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, we get a, uh, a policy that can solve every aspect of the problems. Now, 1MR228.2, very important quote for us. God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare our people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment. And we are right in that time of investigative judgment. This is the purpose for which we establish and maintain our publishing houses, our schools, our sanitariums, hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories this is our purpose in carrying forward every line of work in the course. This is the policy uh, that needs to be implemented because this is the practical godliness that God is looking unto. Um, uh, during the investigative judgment, God is looking for a people who will stand true to him to vindicate his character. And to do that, they must live a life that is experiential, a life that people can see and can say that these people are ready to help the world. We are not to be a people who are just condemning, this is bad, this is bad, but we need to be a people who will say, this is the way Follow it by presenting it in a way that no man can gain say. Christ's life was the greatest, uh, uh, greatest evidence that he was the son of God. And it silenced, his life silenced the Pharisees, silenced the heathens, because he was a living gospel or the living Bible in the midst of the people. Now, 
if we develop publishing houses where where we as uh, we, we we have the present truth articles and books that people can read and know the truth for themselves when we build schools from cooking schools to tailoring schools to carpentry schools to masonry schools all these are schools that can be developed in a simple way in our various houses. We don't need to be technical. We don't need to, to do a mega structure or building somewhere. We just need our homes to do this work. Hygienic restaurants. Nowadays, you can go to mega cities of Kenya, of the world, but it is rare to find hygienic restaurants where you can get vegetarian meals. Why? Because the people of God, the medical missionaries have taken one line of the walk. But God is calling us to have in every city there should be a hygienic restaurant. There should be treatment rooms where the sick can be treated. Simple treatment rooms attached to our hygienic restaurants. We can do simple massages. We can do simple juices. We can do the counseling for the people. If we get complicated cases, we can send them in the uh, sanitariums in the countryside. And where we have physicians who are highly educated, God is calling us to be above the world in terms of knowledge. God is calling our people, medical missionaries who are intelligent, pious, and studious, those who will study, receive revelation from God on in certain cases of illnesses. Those who have researched, it is not bad to research on the the hidden doctors, we can pick that which is good and apply it according to the word of God so that we can find a solution to the world. If we give ourselves to all this, I believe that God can have a people upon the world who can baffle all the policies of this world. No one can gain say. Um, we need to have food factories. The simplest food factory we should have is the farm, the gardens, in our homes, in our schools, in a, of every institution there should be a farm. And uh, last time I talked about our gospel medical missionaries who will help the unemployed. Um, we have a crisis of unemployment in the world today, but God's system was a system that was going to absorb every student, every youth, because in every home, in every place, we shall be having uh, an institution that can absorb our church youths. Now, God is still waiting for us to do this. Whoever shall take up the mantle and develop these institutions, the practical gospel shall have been achieved um, in our lives. And the church will be so strong. The church will be so influential. Um, a medical missionary or a missionary in general should be someone who has something to do for a lifestyle, for a living, self-supporting missionary. That is someone who, uh, who can stand uh, uh, as a, um, who can influence many people in the communities where they are. We are living in communities or in a society where people do not have food. If we know how to develop simple food factories or garden, we know simple baking, simple preparation of food, 
God is able to bless all this that we may be able to, uh, to show Christ to the world. Now, it is to help us to stand true these institutions during the time of investigative judgment. And right now, the judgment is going and about to pass to the living when the aggressions of the National Sunday Law is taking place and everything is set in place to give the image a breath. The policies, the policies administered, policies that we see of uh, Vision 2030, the New World Order agendas, all this shows us that the judgment is about to pass the living and we who are live who are having the present truth are in danger of either being passed away or our names remain immortalized in the book of life and god has given unto us a great work to make us saints to make us people who really reflect the lovely image of Jesus Christ, a people who will influence the society, a great work but a short time. The Lord has shown me clearly before probation closes, for it is to be the test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. This is the test that the people of God must have before they are sealed. All who prove their loyalty to God by observing his law and refusing to accept a spurious Sabbath will rank under the the banner of the Lord God Jehovah and will truth of heavenly origin and accept the Sunday Sabbath will receive the mark of the beast. Now, brothers and sisters, um, I read for us that the test come to us in connection with the true gospel or true medical missionary work. Um, when the image of the beast is raised, no buying, no selling, what are we going to do? In PK 183 says that for want of food and clothing, the devil will have, dom uh, will have dominion over all the people in the world. When every earthly support shall be cut short, what are we going to do? Now that is where gospel medical missionary work is needed. We understand that this time when now things are going to be very difficult, no buying, no selling, we shall be working as relief workers, relief workers walking in homes, treating people, sharing with them the word of God. And if we shall have, if we had established the institutions that the food factories, we shall be giving food unto the people. At the same time, clothing to the people. We need institutions for, uh, for suing that, we, that can do that. Even in the present moment, that is the practical gospel work that we need. And God's church, God's church always works according to the practical lines that God left. Look at the, apost uh, the, the, the apostolic church. They had the Dorcas ministry. Paul was doing the, uh, the tent making at the same time preaching the gospel work, self-support ministry. We are seeing... Uh, the apostles doing the healing. We are seeing the, um, the deacons doing the distribution of, uh, of food and clothing and other things. We are seeing a church develop where we have the, 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 the old women in the church counseling the young in the society or in the church 
to restore their marriages, to make sure that their marriages are working well? Do we have such in the church today? And those fall in the category of medical missionary work. In the homes, we are told that uh, mothers and fathers are supposed to teach their children in a way that they can become home missionaries before uh, before going to the going outside to do foreign missionary work. So we have a very awesome ministry of gospel medical missionary work in our homes in the church to make us stand true to God during the time of investigative judgment. That is so interesting. Our sanitariums have been established for the purpose of preparing a people for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. Sanitariums are ways or means that God has set in place to make sure that our people are prepared. In the purpose of our sanitariums, is to make sure that our people are prepared intellectually and spiritually by sharing with them the word of God, by sharing with them the health principles, by sharing with them uh, the principles of um, hygiene and sanitation. In our sanitariums, they, are, they should be set for people for people just to come, families to come to find a place where they can just read the word of God and hear uh, God speaking to them through nature, through good food. Oh, what a wonderful work that God has given unto us in this aspects of ministry. Now, the enemy of man and God is not willing that this truth should be clearly presented. And this is why we are having a lot of uh, disunity among God's people. We are not united in this work of true gospel medical missionary work, a living church working in the practical lines. Yes, it is good to have the truth and to present it to, and also to share it. But one aspect that should be looked onto is the aspect of practicality of the gospel. What are we doing in the society? What are we doing in the country? What are we doing in the world? What are we doing? If the church can be united to uh, together to give this message an impetus through the practical aspect, I tell us Christ will come very soon. Um, the devil knows that if the people receive it fully, his power will be broken. The plan of salvation, Christ dying for us and giving us his spirit and giving us his life by which we are saved. The devil knows that should we walk according to Christ's way of walking, his head is going to be crushed. Practical work, I'm just about to finish. Practical work will have far more effect than mere sermonizing. We are to give food to the hungry, clothing to the naked, and shelter to the homeless. And we are called to do more than this. And that is so powerful. We are called to do more than just feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, sheltering the homeless, we are supposed, what are we to do more than this? The ones of the soul, only the love of Christ can satisfy. We are supposed to show that love of Christ, to share the word of Christ to the people, to show them that Christ loves them. And so they need to live as he lived. They need to live every sin that doth easily beset them. We are not called to do a work like Adra does or Red Cross does. No, no, no. We are called to do more than this, to present Christ, to prescribe Christ to the people. That is now gospel medical missionary work. 
we are not called to do, uh, let's say, lifestyle ministry. No, we are called to do a medical missionary work. That is different from just lifestyle. The world can do lifestyle work, but we are called to remedy the hearts of men to restore and to work intelligently to make sure that we bring people to good health. Um, if Christ is abiding in us, our hearts will be full of divine sympathy. The sealed fountains of honest Christ-like love will be unsealed. That is what God wants us to do. And I want to encourage us and to challenge us that this work that is laying um, uh, in, in waste, the bridge has not been mended back. In Isaiah chapter 58, a very huge work for us. And it is connected with the Sabbath message, gospel, medical, missionary work. The bridge is still there. But God wants us to fix this gulf by practicing the life of his son to the world. Are we ready for this? Are we ready to do a practical gospel work to the world? This is a challenge that we need to pray about. Everywhere you are, make sure that you are doing something. You are doing something that people can see that God is in you. If God is calling you just to pray for the sick, do it. If God is calling you to, to farm, to make sure that people can get food, do it. If you are gifted in healing or giving remedies and teaching people health principles, do it. If you are blessed with cooking or understanding the principles of good or the art of cookery, do it. If you can just be a good mother who can uh, mother her children well in the, in the family and in the society, do it. If you are a father and God is calling you to show good fatherly principles to the society, do it. We don't have time. And God is able to give us his spirit that he gave his son that can make us to do everything according to his glory. May God bless us. I want us to pray to finish up. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are calling us to an experience of your son, Jesus Christ, to be true gospel medical missionaries. We have seen that this is the plan that you are looking for a people who shall do it. Oh dear God in heaven, may you help us. May you give us means to do it. And that which we can do in a small way, that road that we have in our hands, just like Moses may help us to divide the sea so that we can pass through and go to the Canaan land. Thank you for being with us. Forgive us where we have wronged you, where we have not done our responsibility as it should be, but still give us strength and wisdom to continue in hope. We thank you for hearing us. For this we pray, trusting, believing through the mighty name of your dear son, Jesus Christ. Amen.